Quiet, please. Quiet, please. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and which features Ernest Chappell. Quiet, Please, for tonight is called Wear the Dead Man's Coat. Let me see. Yesterday, that's one day. The day before, that's two. The day before that, that's three. Three days. Yep, it's three days, all right. The doc was right. So that fixes me. You think it don't? Well, listen. You wouldn't know Kidney Fort Cassidy, would you? Yeah, of course you wouldn't. You might have seen him if he was ever walking along Canal Street around six in the evening in the summertime, or if he was down near Wabash and Van Buren under the L of a winter afternoon. He was the guy to put the bite on you for a dime to get to Oak Park because he'd forgotten and spent his last 15 cents for a magazine. He'd show you the magazine, offer to give it to you for a dime. But you never took it. You slipped him a dime and a dime and a dime, and pretty soon he'd have enough to go to Racine if he wanted to. And that's the price of a half pint of the brown stuff in the bottles. He ain't panhandling anymore. He ain't doing nothing. The cops got onto that Oak Park gimmick of his after a while, and Kidney Foot was a little slow in the head, see? Well, he's been doing that one so long he couldn't work up a new kind of bite, so well, for quite a while he ain't had many dimes. I used to see him a lot around Wabash and Van Buren, or in the summertime over on Canal Street. Ain't nobody gonna see him anymore. Any place. He's dead. Ain't anybody gonna ball over Kidney Foot Cassidy if there's to be any balling done, ball over me. Three nights ago it was. That was... I was coming out of the drugstore there under the L. It was around 12, 12.30. I just had a cup of job and a donut. Who should brace me but Kidney Foot Cassidy? He come waddling up, walking like his feet hurt him. That's how he got his name. His right name was Waller. And he put the old Oak Park bite on me. Uh, pardon me, mister. I got to get to Oak Park, see, and I spent my last dime. Hiya, Kidney Foot. Oh. Hello, Floyd. Never recognized you. What do you hear from the mob? What mob? Where's your overcoat? Hmm? Huh? Oh, I lost it. You got two bits? How'd you lose it? Hmm? Huh? Oh, I was asleep over there alongside the Polk Street Depot, and somebody took it off me. You got two bits? I got a dime. I got 14 cents. Ain't you cold? Hmm? Huh? Yeah, I sure am. Yeah, it's been awful cold, ain't it? You'll freeze to death. I'm going to get me a coat tonight. How? Hmm? I don't know. I got to get one or I'll freeze to death. Give me the dime, will you, Floyd? What you been drinking, Kidney Foot? Hmm? Oh, I ain't been drinking. Give me the dime and my 14 cents and I can get some stuff from a fella over on Plymouth Court. Yeah, you get to drinking kidney foot, you're sure going to freeze to death. I'm going to get a coat. Well, how? Take it away from somebody. Come on, let's walk over to Plymouth Court and find a fella and get us a drink. I'm cold. <laughs> There was a time when I first come to Chicago. That's been many a year ago, and I was broke and had no place to stay. I was walking along Canal Street one night, and Kidney Foot Cassidy was the only guy in Chicago who took pity on me, bought me a cup of coffee, and left me sleep in his room over on West Madison Street, see? So we've had quite a winter in Chicago this year, and I got a place to stay. I got a room on North LaSalle Street, at least while the dough lasts. And, and I... Ain't seen Kidney Foot for a long time, and he's a lot older. The poor guy is starving. What am I going to do? And all I got to say is I wish I hadn't. 
I got more than a dime I tell him about it. I offered to buy him a cup of java and a hot dog over on South State in the shooting galleries where the dogs are bigger, even if they are staler. The kidney foot, he don't go for eating. Drinking is his racket, and it hasn't killed him. He ain't dead. Yet. So I walk over to Plymouth Court with him. That's a little kind of alley off Van Buren between State and Dearborn. It's all full of printing houses. It's dark there at night, especially this time of night. You could hear his teeth chatter for two blocks. Now, this three nights ago, see, I say to Kitty Foot, why don't he come home with me, but he ain't interested. All he can think of is a bottle. And I guess, uh, Coke. So, we get the bottle from a little guy in a big overcoat like a Mackinac with a sheepskin collar that come out from between a couple of buildings in the dark. And after Kidneyfoot takes a great big slug out of the bottle, he gets the coat. Kidneyfoot was sore because the bottle busted when he clouded the guy, but when he took the coat off him, there was two more bottles in the guy's suit coat. Me? I never done a thing. But I couldn't. I didn't have a chance. One minute, Kidneyfoot is slugging down rock gut. The next minute, the guy is laying on the cobblestones and the old man's taking his coat. He put it on. He run his hands in the pockets. He wiggled down inside the sheepskin collar. And he laughed. <laughs> hey, I'm warm, Floyd. <laughs> I'm standing there with my face hanging out a foot. Warm, I think. Warm. Boy, you're hot in the pistol. You know, that's the thing. This little guy, you never think he never heard a flea. And he takes this fellow like that. I don't need to ask, is he dead? I'm so surprised I can't move. I just popped my eyes. Oh, kidney foot, he giggles again. <laughs> How do you like it, Floyd, huh? And I just say, gig, gig, gig. Then Kidney Foot, he takes another drink of the stuff and he grabs him by the arm. <coughs> Come on, Floyd. Let's go. Go? Go where? Up to your place. Now listen. You're going to put me up for a couple of days, kid, ain't you? Well, but I... Kid, look, I just knocked the guy off. I'm hot, kid. Are you my friend or ain't you? Listen, Kidney Foot, I... Who was it staked you when you was a punk right here in town without a nickel, huh? Who was it? Well, it was you, Kidney Foot, but and I'm not... And if it comes to that, kid... Why, you was right here with me when the guy was knocked off. You know, them cops is awful good persuaders. Ah, lucky here. I might get all mixed up, see, and put the finger on you. Not meaning to, you see, but, uh, see? Well, I never done a thing. You know I never. Yeah, but how long you think them tough guys down at the Bureau will believe that, Floyd? Come on. Leave us go home. So what could I do? He had me, didn't he? So I took him home with me. All the way over to the streetcar, he was giggling to himself like he was nuts or something. And I never said a word. What was I to say, huh? So when I seen the streetcar coming, I says to him, Now listen, I says, cut out that laugh and make a fool of yourself, I says. It's bad enough what you've done already without drawing some streetcar county's attention to you so as he remember you, I says. So he says, uh-huh, to me. And we get on a car and stand on the back platform. We're just crossing Randolph Street when he looks up at me and he says... Uh, it sure feels warm, Floyd. Now shut up talking about it. <laughs> this is the warmest coat I ever had. All right, shut up, will you? About the warmest coat in the world, I bet. Will you shut up? <laughs> yeah, okay. And then I notice the streetcar car he's looking at me as if I'm nuts or something. I never said nothing. What? I said I didn't say anything. Well, so what? So don't tell me to shut up, Billy. I wasn't talking to you. Well, don't get heavy with me, Billy. If you knew how stupid you look standing there talking to yourself. I wasn't talking to myself. Okay, so I'm nuts. Lake Street, Lake Street, next. Well, I say to myself, the guy must be nuts. Here is Kidney Foot standing right alongside of me, grinning like a chassis cap. Wiggling his neck around inside that fuzzy collar. Can't the guy see? And we was all the way to Division Street where we get off when I remember the county only took one fare from me. 
I'm walking up Division Street towards LaSalle, kidney foot bobbing along the side of me. He's kind of chuckling again down inside his collar. And I put it to him. What was with that there streetcar jockey, kidney foot? How? He didn't see you. <laughs> didn't he? He acted like he didn't. Besides, I never paid him no fare for you. And he never asked me. <laughs> Funny, huh? I don't get it. Well, I ain't very anxious to be seen by nobody. Yeah. Listen, kidney foot. What? Look, you know me. I ain't no angel. Yeah, <laughs> I should say not, kid. <laughs> well, what I mean, listen. Huh? I don't like to steal one little bit. I won't stay long, Floyd. Well, what I mean, uh, I can't stand no manslaughter rap, see? Oh, me neither, Floyd. One more rap and I'm in Joliet from now on. Uh, me too. Now, look, you kidney foot. Don't be tough on me. I won't be no tougher than I have to, Floyd. Well, I mean... I know what you mean, kid. It's the same difference with me, see? I don't want that Joliet department either. Well, I... So I figured like this... The only out I got is for you to stash me away for a while, see? I got nothing again, you kid, but this here is the only out I got, see? Yeah, I know. So you better play ball, see? Uh, or else. Yeah. Well... I... Sure, take it easy, kid. Nobody's going to see me. Nobody's going to put a finger on me. I ain't going to put the finger on you, kidney foot. Nobody ain't. Especially you. Because if you do, it's where you live? Yeah. I keep quiet if Miss Freiberg sees you. Who's that, the landlady? Yeah. She sees you. Show the both of us out. She won't see me. Well, don't leave her. The uh, streetcar Connie didn't see me, did he? Well, but... <laughs> Man, you cut that out. You see... Well, what are you laughing at, anyhow? I just thought of something funny. What? And I'll tell you when we get in the room. <laughs> Is it warm up there? Yeah, it's all right. Tell me what? <laughs> Some like old lady told me once. <laughs> Come on, open the door. Yeah, keep quiet. Now, don't make any noise. Up the stairs. Go ahead. You don't have to worry, Floyd. Nobody will see you. Cut it out. Come on in, quick. Okay. Say, this is fine, Floyd. Yeah, go to bed and shut up. Where are you going to sleep? I ain't sleepy. What you need is a slug of stuff. Then you'll sleep. No, I don't want none. Take off that coat and go to bed. Oh, no. No, I don't want to take it off. I like it. Suit yourself. Only don't make any noise. Don't you want a drink? No. Uh, well, I do. <coughs> oh. <coughs> better, better have a snort. Put you to sleep. Well, well, I'll have a little. Sure. <coughs> Jeez. What was you going to tell me? Huh? What you was laughing about. <coughs> Oh. Oh. Hey. This here bed ain't so bad. It's all right. Better where I've been sleeping. <coughs> it's warm, warmer, too. Oh, this coat. <laughs> I'll have a little more of that stuff. Sure. Fine stuff, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, what were you laughing at? Oh. Snakes, 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 be quiet. <laughs> oh, I have to laugh. You know, my old lady told me once when I was a kid. Oh, keep it down, <laughs> keep it down. <laughs> yeah, there was an old saying. Shh. Uh, there was an old saying. Uh, let me see now. Uh, um, wear the dead man's coat. None will take note. See? What's so funny about that? <laughs> well, I got on the dead guy's coat. Nobody takes note. Ah, you drunk. Oh, no, I'm not. Give me another slug. Yeah, oh. sure. <laughs> I 
I tell you, you're nuts. She used to tell me about an old guy. Um, his name was John Thomas Grady, his name was. Um, so John Thomas Grady, he knocked off a judge. Uh, this was in the old country. And nobody ever seen him from that day to this. Yeah? How come? He put on the dead man's coat. I don't get it. People couldn't see him. So? See? He can't see me either. I can see you. Nobody else can. <laughs> Give me some of that. How can I see you if nobody else can? Because you was in on it, I guess. I don't know how it works, Floyd, but that's how it is. I... I'm... Unvisible. Ah, you're crazy in the head. Roll over there. I want to sleep. I thought you said you wasn't sleeping. All of a sudden, I am. One more nightcap. Split it with you. <laughs> yes, sir. Unvisible. Unsensible. Um, there was more to the saying. Um, only I forget. Well, well shut up. Uh, okay, okay. Where dead man's coat? I woke up and I was freezing to death. Cassidy, he was all right. He was bundled up in that coat, snoozing away as peaceful as if he had nothing on his conscience. I guess he didn't. He didn't have a conscience, I mean. My head was banging like a boiler factory. That there two-bit whiskey jars your teeth loose if you ain't used to it like Kitty Booth Cassidy was. Yeah. I sat there on the edge of the bed and I thought. The more I thought, the worse it got. I was stuck. He had me. If I beeped, he put the mark on me and where he went, I'd go too. <sighs> Didn't do no good to think. No, because I'm a good guy. Because Cassidy had to have an overcoat. No cop in the world would believe me for a minute. sit and look out at the brick wall next to the window. And I look at Cassidy all warm in his new coat and sleep in the sleep of the just. And I'm going to wake him up, too. And then there's a rap on the door and it opens and I pretty near jump out of my skin. Boy, am I scared. Well, good morning, Floyd. Good, good morning, Mrs. Freiberg. I tried to throw the blanket over Cassidy. Good morning. Didn't you forget something yesterday, Floyd? Forget? Forget what? He kicks the blanket off. It was rent day yesterday. Oh, uh, rent. Cassidy opens one eye and looks at Mrs. Freiberg. Rent day? What's the matter with you this morning? Mm, got a hangover. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I have. Cassidy makes a face at her. Place smells like a brewery. Well... Yeah? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, the, I, I'll give you the money. I'm trying to keep eye on Cassidy. How much is it? You sure have got a hangover, ain't you? It's four dollars, just the same as it always was. Okay, four dollars. Cassidy's climbing out of bed. Four dollars. Listen, Floyd, I got my cleaning to do. I can't take up the whole morning talking to you. All right. I reach in my pocket, I take out the four dollars, and I hand it to her. Cassidy has come out of bed and he's standing right there in front of Mrs. Freiberg, all squidged up in his coat. He's making faces at her. She don't notice a thing. What are you looking so funny about? I, uh, hangover, I guess. Cassidy's bobbing up and down in front of her, grinning like an ape, and she don't pay no mind. You want a receipt? Receipt? No, I, I guess not, Mrs. Freiberg. I guess not. What are you up to, Floyd? Me? I won't stand for no monkey shines in my house. You know that. I ain't got no monkey shines. Well, all right. See, you don't. I'll send David up to make the bed. You better get out and get some air. Cassidy is doubling up, laughing all the time she's talking. So she goes out and he pretty near busts. <laughs> you see? You see? I am invisible. Oh, boy. 
Why didn't I think of this before? <laughs> you gonna think? He was right there. He done everything but pinch the old lady and she never seen him. Did you ever hear that before? Getting invisible wearing the coat of a guy you killed? Yeah, I never did either. But boy, it's no kidding. Uh, sure. Him and me went out right past the houseboy David. He speaks to me. Don't give Kidney Foot a tumble. We walk down the street and Kidney Foot deliberately walks right into a guy and the guy begs my pardon. The guy at Thompson's thought I was cuckoo when I ordered two breakfast. He sure thought we was only me. <laughs> Kidney Foot slips his mid into the cash drawer, lifts a couple of ten dollar bills. He snatches a handful of nickels and dimes from a newsstand. <laughs> Just like everybody but me was blind to him. And then we're back at the house and we read the newspapers he pinched. And there's the item about the fella that got killed. Mystery. And the old chills begin to crawl up my spine when it says the cops have got a clue. Yeah, maybe they have, maybe they haven't, but there was two of us there. There's only one of us that anybody can see. It's me. All the time, Cassidy's sitting there wrapped up in that coat, that dead man's coat. And I say to him finally, Cassidy, will you take that coat off? Floyd, I, I can't take it off. Why not? I tried it. It won't come off. Ah, uh, stop it. Unbutton it and take it off. Floyd, I tell you, I can't take it off. Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. The buttons won't unbutton. I gotta keep on wearing it. Hey, let me try. <laughs> By gosh, I can't get it unfastened. I know you can't, Floyd. I remember the rest of the saying. What saying? About the dead man's coat. It's it's something about how you're dead when you take it off. I tried all day, every once in a while, to get the coat off him, but it was no soap. You could get a button unfastened, and when you tried the next one, the first one, the button all over again. Cassidy got scared and scared her. She so did I, for that matter. Twice during the day, old lady Freiburg come running up to see what all the commotion was about. It was Cassidy crying. I always managed to shut him up before she got in the room. Of course, she couldn't see him. By nighttime, I was pretty near nuts. I got him another bottle, and finally he went to sleep, all wrapped up in his coat. Or, the guy's coat. Oh, sir, I didn't sleep on that bed with him. I slept in the chair, what sleeping I'd done. He woke up in the morning, hollering, I shut him up. I talked to him about how swell it was to be invisible. About how he could get in places, jewelry stores, banks, rich people's houses over on Lakeshore Drive. All the time he kept sitting there wiggling in that coat. He'd be trying to take it off and then he'd all of a sudden think about having to be dead to get it off and he'd stop. So I keep on talking about how nice it is to be invisible and he's fidgeting and not listening much. After a while, an idea came to me. It would be nice to be invisible. <laughs> and it would be nicer to be invisible and not have kidney food Cassidy around. I guess my talking to him had to run down. What's the matter with you, Floyd? Me? Nothing, kidney foot. You're looking at me awful funny. Am I? Give me a drink. <laughs> so I give him a drink. I went out and I bought two more bottles. Fifths. Money was going to be plentiful pretty soon, see? Hey, passed out. I sat there in the dark and thought. Long towards morning, I made up my mind. I'd get rid of this guy that was hanging around my neck. And I'd be invisible, too. Man. Think about that yourself sometime. The things a guy could do if you can't see him. So it was 7 o'clock in the morning when I went over to the bureau and got out my Georgia boxing glove. You know what a Georgia boxing glove is? Switchblade knife blade about an inch longer in the palm of your hand is wide. Kidney foot was snoring kind of quiet. And I went over to bed. I give him the Georgia boxing glove for a present. The coat come off easy. I put it on, buttoned it up. 
And I went out for a walk. Yeah, I wanted to try it out, see? It was a success. I walked all over the loop. I rode streetcars for free. I took a guy's pocketbook right out of his hand. Pretty near noon when I decided to come back to my room and pick up what odds and ends I needed. Oh, nobody seen me go in. I went right up to the room. Did I get a surprise? Cassidy was still laying there. He he hadn't bled at all. But old Lady Freiburg was there, too, having a cat fit. There was two guys with her. One I spotted for a dick right away you couldn't miss. The other guy was bending over Cassidy. He was a doctor. And I seen his grip. Old Lady Freiburg was talking. I came up to, to change the bedclothes, and, and there he was. I don't know how he got in here. So Cassidy wasn't invisible anymore. But I was. And then the doctor turns around. How long has this man been here? I don't know. He wasn't here yesterday. That's funny. Funny? How is it funny? Well, it's funny because this man's been dead for three days. Three days? Three days? Well, I just killed him this morning. No, ma'am, I'm sure. He's been dead for three days at least. Three days. It was three days ago. He put on a dead man's coat. He's been... He's been... And I got the coat on now. And... I, I can't get it off. Listen to Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper. The man who spoke to you was Ernest Chappell. And Ed Latimer was our Cassidy. Leora Thatcher played Mrs. Freiburg. And Martin Lawrence, who played the conductor, was also the doctor. The original music for Quiet, Please is composed and played by Albert Berman. Now, for a word about next week's Quiet, Please, here's our writer-director, my good friend, Bill Cooper. The story I've got for you next week, I call Sketch for a Screenplay. It's about a man and a woman and an airplane and Hollywood and a number of other things. By the way, friends, Mr. Cooper and I have been wanting this chance for many, many weeks to ask you what you think of our broadcasts. We'd very much appreciate a short line from you as to how you're enjoying Quiet, Please. Just a brief note. Now, until next week, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chappell. Please comes to you from New York. This is the world's largest network serving more than 450 radio stations, the Mutual Broadcasting System.